Cool. Uh, aesthetics, do you want to get technical right here? Actually, this thing's not working. There we go. Oh, there's slides working. Slides working. Now you'll figure it out. <laughs> Is this updated with it? Uh, just hit it. Let me go back. There you go. Fourth? It's not? Uh, whatever. Go back. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Yay for Max. Let's That's see. Now roll it back. What? Roll it back. Roll it back. Where are we? Oh, wow. This is a, yeah, it's all good. Let's see. Yeah, well, keep going soft back. Keep going back. Is this where? Keep going back. Keep going back. Back? Go back. There you go. Okay. There we go. So you guys all saw. Everyone, he is awesome. <laughs> Indeed. So there are a few networks involved in this, and uh, they've all taken different forms. Um, They have uh, played a lot of different uh, roles. Uh, some of them show up in. Bleh. I hate this. Do, 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 do. In your work life. Yes, a lot of these show up in your work life. And one of the things we're getting at is you have different types of networks you can have. And a lot of what we know of are centralized. But one of the things we're reaching at is decentralized. So we have three different types of networks we're going over right now DN42, which was actually, if I believe, uh, written by Equinox here. And uh, he's done a lot of work with it. It's been around since, I think, 2002. And it's helped join together all the different spaces that are in Germany, to a large extent. And it's part of the inspiration for the project that we've been working on. Past that, we have Chaos VPN, which is what McFly approached us with. And that is more the European, the German link. And Agora is the, the Agora link is the stuff that we're working on in America. So we have a number of goals. This is kind of hard to do, because I have to look up there. I can't really see it down here. <laughs> Yeah. So we have a number of goals here. We have privacy, which is a big concern. Everyone is uh, worried about how much of the personal data gets out, who sees it, and whatnot. Community. There's no point in doing this. There's no point in a network unless you connect, connect, uh, connect with other people. There's no point in doing it unless you have ideas that you want to share, unless you want to bridge together and work together on uh, different activities. To be available, if you have a network and people are connected together and it goes down, then there's no point in it. How many people here use Facebook? Come on. <laughs> See, the exercise earlier worked. Come on. <laughs> wow. OK. How many people here are pissed off if Facebook goes, actually, Twitter is a better example. Here, here's Twitter. Did it, anybody remember the summer last year when Twitter was down like 3 fourths of the time and the fail wheel became a huge internet meme? Yeah, like a couple weeks ago, right. So people get pissed off when they have something that they rely on as a foundation for communication and they get blocked. Um, and because we live in a fairly fast-paced world, we have a lot of multimedia that we try to share. I have a video that I like and I want to share it with somebody, but I'm on a dial-up, so it takes like six hours to do it, or it takes two days to download like a talk that I saw at CCC, right? So Having availability with speed is very important. And that's one of the things we're considering, which has led to some of the choices that we have made in the technology that we're using. Past that, if it's impossible to use, nobody's going to be into it. If you can click a button and make it work, it's amazing, as opposed to having to run a shell script or needing to learn new Unix utilities or anything like that. If you already have the skills built up, great. But most people don't. And we're trying to bring those people together so that we can collaborate and educate them. And uh, everyone can learn from each other. And the easier the tools and the foundation are to use, therefore, the easier it will be to work and build things upon that foundation. And last, we're trying to get, uh, connect our friends together. But if you want to do something with your friends, eventually you're going to do things that you don't want other people to see for any number of reasons. So, one of the reasons behind privacy, there's two things here. One of them, we'll get into things like Tor in a little bit. I didn't want to say too much about that yet. But there, there's a couple things. First, how many people here have worked on something and didn't want anyone else to see it because it was still a work in progress? Anyone? Right. Maybe it's keeping your code repository private because you didn't want it to be released to the world yet. Or maybe you were just, maybe you're too self-critical and you need to get enough peer review before it's released and whatnot. And um, also, encryption is very important. So not just being self-critical and keeping something to yourself until you want to release it to the world, but maybe you do have something that you want to keep people out of, and public key is really important for that, or any kind of PGP, any kind of encryption. 
How many people here have friends? <laughs> How many people here like talking to their friends? The fact that everyone here is in this room and we had this huge line and the Congress is basically sold out except for the day passes and that there's an internet stream broadcasting this to the world, we definitely have a wide global network and we're trying to share ideas with everyone. If we didn't want to learn, we wouldn't be here. If we didn't want to explore and share ideas, we wouldn't be here. And there are more people who couldn't be here and uh, that's kind of what we're doing with the network. So, one of the problems, not just with Twitter and everything else, but when things go down, it's really, really difficult to do anything. Um, has anybody ever tried to take a, a plane trip somewhere and get caught in a snowstorm? How many people, were try how many people ran into tr trouble trying to travel to CCC? Anyone? Yeah, I had a four-hour layover at the airport in Frankfurt, and uh, apparently that was nothing compared to some people getting detained in countries and whatnot. <laughs> So there are a number of reasons to look at speed. Our society is fast-paced. People demand instant answers. If you send a text message to somebody, you want the text message, you want them to respond within a couple minutes, otherwise you freak out. Maybe they're not responding to me, maybe they're, you know, dead. <laughs> yeah, I was dead at the time. Also, we do a lot of sharing, especially with uh, VoIP and Skype type things. If we're trying to send a lot of data back and forth really fast, we need something that's really fast. And it has to, has to be uh, easy to use. Also, this is important for maintenance. It's not just getting people together on it, but if you have problems, they have to be easy to troubleshoot. If you want nodes to come up and go down, if you want people to just uh, join up and leave, if you have to go contact a sys administrator or if you contact the local guru every time you want to do something, then uh, there's kind of no point in it, and it's no fun either. So now that we have this network that we're constructing of all these hacker spaces around the world and other things, we're looking at a number of different institutions, basically anybody who's working on something cool that they want to share with everyone, well, we want to spread the love. So we want to create a giant network and we're looking at the different ways to do it. There are a number of solutions that work and a number that don't, right? So centralization doesn't work because it requires there to be a center point. If that center point goes down, then we're kind of SOL. And it also makes it difficult to keep anonymous if you have to keep reporting. And uh, it makes it difficult to upkeep. So you have things like OpenVPN which is a very, uh, very good solution for some things, but it's centralized, so it doesn't really work for us. Before I say anything about Tor, uh, is anybody like Jake or Roger in the room? <laughs> I want to say that Tor is a fucking awesome project, and it's very important to preserve privacy and anonymity, and there's a lot of people who depend on it, and I think Tor has even saved lives. So I just want to put that out there before we say why it's not good for our purposes, because Tor is actually really cool. It's a very worthwhile project. However, Tor, the way it works, it's a decentralized network, and when you make a request from, say, point A to point B, it actually hops over, say, 50 different, uh, different nodes as it's trying to reach that point. And every point it does that, it decrypts, uh, or it encrypts and decrypts. So it, the problem with Tor is it's actually very slow. It's very good for privacy and preserving anonymity, but if you're trying to send a whole bunch of data back and forth really fast, it can be kind of laggy. Freenet is a, a very good decentralized solution, but it's primarily used for file sharing. And it's focused on anonymity as well. And while we like anonymity and we want to enable people to be anonymous if they choose, you don't have to be anonymous. And that's actually one of the big distinctions, is trying to create a decentralized network that, while it promotes anonymity, it is not, an, it is not a necessary option. Was this you? No, still you. Okay. You should talk about this because I can't remember. This is a, yeah, the MRN VPN is a local CCC thing, so McFly knows more about it. The MRN VPN was uh, an open VPN network in server mode. Uh, it worked very well for a while, but after, the, after a time, the main nodes went down, and as far as I know, it never came up back again, which uh, very good illustrates the problem of why you do want to have a decentralized